In this video, I'd like to talk about how to interpret a quadratic graph. So with all of these problems, they're going to be word problems. We're going to be given a graph and we need to be able to interpret it and essentially verify whether or not the statements are true. So let me just scroll down a bit so you can get an idea of what those statements might look like. And we'll go through each of them individually and choose which ones are true, because in this case, you can have multiple answers. So Sarah kicked a ball in the air. So we have projectile motion, which generally travels in a parabola, and it's a perfect parabola if there's no air. Now, since this is a perfect one, in fact, in this problem, we are going to assume that there's no air resistance, because that's how you get a perfect one. If there was air resistance, it would push it down a bit, and it would finish a little bit early. So actually, I didn't draw that perfectly, but you get the rough idea. So we don't need to know the physics of it, but it's a little bit of background. It might help you feel more familiar with these problems. So she kicked a ball in the air. The function f models the height of the ball. So that's our, in, or that's our dependent variable in meters as a function of time in seconds. That's our independent variable. That's our x axis here. So which of these statements are true? Well, let's first analyze the graph. And it looks like at time zero that she's kicking the ball from a starting place of one meters above the ground. And then as time goes on, it looks like maybe right about here, it's going to reach its maximum. So maybe that's 1.75 seconds. And it reaches a maximum height of around 14 meters. And then after that, the ball is going to drop. And about almost three and a half seconds, the ball is going to finally hit the ground. So let's start going through these questions now, now that we have some familiarity with the graph. And the general strategy for these, or at least how I approach it, is to first define the variables, or at least make sure you understand the variables. Know that our independent variable is time, and know the units, that it's in seconds. And then the dependent variable is height, which is in meters. So make sure you understand what those variables represent and what units they have. So now we can answer the questions. And the first one, the ball moved upwards for about 3.5 seconds. So here's three and a half seconds. So if the ball kept going up and up and up, that would be true. But it's not true because at about 1.75 seconds, it starts moving downward. So that one's not right. And this one says the ball started moving upwards after about 1.75 seconds. So that's the opposite of what happened. After 1.75 seconds, it starts moving downward. So that upwards is not right. And, you know, if you want to correct the first one, this is really 1.75 seconds there. And then this one would be down or downwards after about 1.75 seconds. So that one's not right either. And choice C, the ball hit the ground after about three and a half seconds. Now that one we did come across, that one is true. Because at a height of zero, that's when the ball would hit the ground. You can see that our time is about three and a half seconds. So that one is true. And let's look at the final one. The ball hit the ground after about 1.75 seconds. Well, that's when it reached its maximum height. That's right here when the ball was way up top. And we already know it, it can't be both of these. It has to be just one of them. And we already verified that choice C was right. So in this case, there actually was only one answer. And that answer was choice letter C. 